Ray was a lonely orphan who was trained by the strongest wizard of all time and unlocks his hidden magic powers. Ray White was orphaned at a very young age because of widespread war in his kingdom, and one day was found inside of a forest by one of the strongest ice mages of the country named Lydia. She took him back to her army camp where they took care of him while he rested and regained his strength. As soon as he woke up, he seemed to like Lydia, who ended up making a decision to keep him as her apprentice and the next ice blade sorcerer once she dies. He trained under her and another man named Howard, and he loved his unit more than anything, as he laid waste to enemies by using his ice magic. Much to the surprise of other people, as it's not easy to control ice magic. One day, however, the battle goes awry and both Lydia and Howard end up getting wounded. Ray tried to save Howard, but he died in front of his eyes, while Lydia was paralyzed below her waist for the rest of her lifetime. This traumatic experience ended up causing him to lose control of his magic as he let out a huge blast of ice everywhere. Several years have passed now and Ray is going to Arnold Academy, the best school in the entire kingdom that teaches sorcery to gifted nobles and descendants of sorcerers. Ray, however, becomes the very first person in the history of this school who gets enrolled even after being just of ordinary descent. He arrives at the academy and is instantly impressed by the grandeur of the school. A group of guys call his name from behind, and when he turns around, he spots five guys standing there and their leader, whose name is Albert, proceeds to insult Ray on the basis of his ordinary descent. Ray doesn't lose his cool and calmly replies that he still wants to learn many things from this academy, which enrages Albert, prompting him to try and grab Ray. Ray elegantly dodges his hands and before Albert could do anything, he is stopped by a red-haired girl with a regal air around her, named Amelia Rose. From the reactions of the onlookers, Ray deduces that this girl must be a special person even among the nobles, and he turns out to be right. Amelia is the oldest daughter of the strongest of the three noble houses and gifted sorcerer. She walks up to Albert and says that anyone who is capable enough to pass the exam deserves a position in this institute, no matter of his descent. Albert is enraged, but he leaves the situation immediately. Ray thanks Amelia and they introduce themselves, striking an unlikely friendship among the lowest and the highest in this world's hierarchy. Ray enters the classroom and meets his class teacher Grady who directs him to his seat. Grady explains the phenomenon of magic and how it is used. She also explains the five different ranks in sorcery, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and the topmost rank, which only seven sorcerers have achieved, grand. Albert again interrupts the class and asks Grady, why is there an ordinary in the school that strives for excellence and produces excellent sorcerers? To which Grady heatedly replies that it's not their place to judge a sorcerer by its descent, as a sorcerer can only be judged by their skills. Next, Grady explains the basics of sorcery and explains that there are five basic elements you can modify, solids, liquids, gases, and plasma. Then she shows an example of sorcery by producing a bunch of roses made of ice. She tells the class to repeat after her, and Amelia is able to produce a single, beautiful-looking glass rose, whereas Ray only produces an ice cube, resulting in the class making fun of him. Later, Ray goes to the library and meets with one of the girls who expressed her interest in the research of a sorcerer called Dr. Amesworth. She introduces herself to Elisa Griffith and sits down with Ray, who explains that he has always loved the research of Dr. Amesworth. They start having a conversation when he asks about her hoodie, to which she replies that she doesn't like her ears because she is a half-elf. He assures her that her ears look beautiful, which brings a smile to her face and starts the friendship between these two. He returns to his dorm later, only to find another guy waiting for him. He introduces himself as Evie Armstrong and says that he isn't like other nobles and doesn't care whether he's an ordinary person or not. They end up striking up a very strong friendship between them. Next morning, while on a morning jog, he ends up meeting a third-year student named Rebecca Bradley and establishes a rapport with her as well. The next day, on his way to meet one of his former acquaintances, Abby Garnett, he ends up colliding with a girl who introduces herself as Clarice Cleveland. He asks about her family, to which she replies that it's pretty famous among the nobles. But before she can explain more, she had to run along because of a chore she had to do. He meets with Abby and later goes to his swordsmanship lessons where he has to spar against Albert. The session starts and Albert uses his full power to swing at Ray, but Ray elegantly deflects his blow. This enrages Albert, who goes in for a powerful thrust, but to everyone's surprise, Ray completely demolishes Albert's sword with his own thrust, winning the battle in a matter of seconds. The next day, Ray goes to the Environmental Research Club, which is filled with muscular men sitting around in underwear. Evie is also a part of this club, and Ray wants to join it. These men at first write him off because, according to them, he is too skinny. But when he removes his clothes, the underlying muscles can be seen pretty easily, impressing them. He also shows them a Golden Hunter card that he has, which is a very rare card and a surprising thing for an ordinary person to possess. The Environmental Research Club accepts him, 
but he's not done yet. He wants to join more than one club, so he goes to the headquarters of the gardening club which is headed by the third-year student, Rebecca. He calmly enters the room full of girls sitting down and drinking tea. He takes a seat and asks Rebecca's permission to join the club. She doesn't seem to have any problems, but one of her friends named Dina gets up and interrupts the application, claiming that Ray came here with ulterior motives and that he is after Rebecca herself. Ray assures her that it's not the case, but Dina doesn't believe him. Rebecca respects Dina's opinions and tells her to judge Ray based on his work. So Dina takes Ray to the terrace and gives him the job of making a flower garden within seven days. This is an incredibly difficult task to accomplish, as first he has to remove every single speck of grass from the roof, and only then can he start working towards laying down the foundation. The work is tiring, but Ray is determined, so just in one day he is able to remove all the grass from the roof, and the next day he starts plowing the soil to get ready for plantation. The third day, he starts laying down brick walls to create a boundary, and that day, even Rebecca comes to check on his progress and even gives him a fruit sandwich, which he enjoys quite a bit. Later, she asks permission to touch his muscles, as she has never touched a guy's muscles before. Ray obliges, and Rebecca seems impressed by his physique. This entire exchange is being watched by multiple of his classmates from the other building, along with Amelia. The next day, he completes the garden and much to Diana's surprise, as not only did he make a garden, he did it before the deadline. She commends him and approves his application to join the gardening club, making him an official member. On the way back to his dorm, he meets up with Clarice, who is observing some of the insects on the ground. He approaches her and she seems flustered, as she is a noble who likes insects, whereas other nobles enjoy more beautiful-looking animals, such as horses, dogs, and bunnies. Ray reassures her that there is nothing wrong in liking insects, as he himself loves them a lot. This makes her very happy and reinforces the friendly bond between them. The next day, he goes to school and meets up with Abby, who informs him about the possibility of a spy from the kingdom who is working undercover as a student. She tells him that it is very important to find the spy, as a lot of information can get leaked if the spy escapes. He then goes to his daily lectures, where the teacher asks him to explain the levels of sorcery, to which he explains that there are three levels, low, mid, and saint level sorcery. Apart from that, he ends up explaining the different types of chain sorcery as well in detail, which impresses the entire class. Miss Grady tells the class that practical training will start soon, so she asks them to form a group among themselves. Ray obviously teams up with Evie, but they also need more members, so he asks whether Elisa would like to join their team, which she happily accepts. But then to everyone's surprise, Amelia walks up to Ray and asks them whether she could join as well. Ray agrees within a second, and hence the teams are formed. The next day they go near the forest, and their task is to survive for 24 hours, without asking for help, as the forest is filled with the monsters. Ray's team goes in, and they divide the work between themselves. While walking, Elisa encounters a giant hornet, but before the hornet could attack her, Ray jumps in front of her and slashes the hornet in two with one swing of his sword, impressing all three of them. Later, he ends up killing any more monsters that they encountered with exceeding ease. The next day, while they were trying to find their way out of the forest, he heard a scream, so he ran towards it. He finds that Albert's team is in trouble, while facing a giant insect monster. The rest of his team is already stuck to a tree, and Albert himself is on his back, trembling. Ray runs towards the monster, as the monster spits gooey liquid towards him, which he dodges with amazing precision, shocking Albert. Ray jumps into the air and stabs the monster right between the eyes, killing him in an instant. Ray's team arrives there as well, and they start helping the others out of their binds when someone from the shadows does magic on the dead monster, reviving him from the dead to fight again. The revived monster seems to be stronger than before, but Ray doesn't even waste a moment and attacks him with his sword. Surprisingly enough, the monster is able to block his strike, which impresses Ray. The monster attacks Ray this time, but he is able to block his attack with his sword, and they enter a stalemate. Ray is surprised by his strength and suspects foul play, as why would there be such a strong monster in a jumble for amateur sorcerers? He backs off, but his friends take the lead and prepare to attack the monster. Amelia uses her flame magic to cast a wall between Ray and the monster, while Evie uses his brute strength to pick up a big boulder and throw it at the monster. Alyssa uses her wind magic to force the boulder to hit the monster with great force, knocking it off balance, and Ray seizes the opportunity to hit the monster, slashing it in half. Everyone cheers Ray, but Elisa gets scared by such a strong monster and gets wobbly knees. Ray picks her up on his back and carries her to the main floor of the school. The results are released, and his team wins the competition by a huge margin but Ray easily notices that none of the students are happy with an ordinary person winning a competition. It doesn't bother Ray much as he is already used to it. The next day, he goes back to visit his master, who turns out to be none other than Dr. Lydia Ainsworth herself. She apparently taught Ray everything he knows today, ever since he was a child. 
He greets her, and they sit down for some tea and cake. Lydia explains that she is working on new research, and this time the research is aimed at the most important component in any human, their brain. He shows interest in trying to understand more, so she explains her research to him in detail. After that, he takes the wheelchair-bound Lydia out for a walk in the woods. While there, they talk about life, and she seems interested in knowing his daily activities. He tells her that he has made some friends, which she is delighted to hear. She tells him to take care of himself and the people around him and gives him a small book she has written for him as a parting gift. The next day, while out for a run, Ray meets Elisa, who is going to the library to study, so Ray asks her whether he could accompany her. This shocks Elisa and she gets flustered but says yes. They go and change, and then they go to the library together. She gets another book about Lydia experiments, whereas he reads the book that Lydia gave him yesterday. When they move outside, they spot Claris, who was apparently also in the library. Ray invites her out for a lunch with them, which she accepts and during the lunch both Claris and Elisa become good friends. They all part ways and Ray was about to go back alone as Claris and Elisa went together, but before he could leave, he spotted Amelia, coming out of a cab. He greets her and she explains to him that she was in a family meeting. They take a walk together to a nearby park and he tells her about his day with Claris and Elisa. She visibly gets jealous and asks Ray to go out with her at that very moment as well, which Ray accepts without any problems. They go to a mall where she tries on several dresses for Ray to judge, and at one point she even runs out of the dressing room wearing only her undergarments because she got scared of a spider. Overall, the date goes well and the walk back to the school together. The sun is about to set down, but Ray is called by Miss Grady, who offers him tea and tells him that she is really sorry about the harsh treatment he is receiving just because he is an ordinary person. Ray assures her that it doesn't bother him, but she vows that she is going to make even more effort now and more than anything, she will try her very best to become an excellent teacher for him. Ray thanks him and goes back to his dorm, but the thought about the spy in the school is still troubling him. The next day, Ray spends some time with his gym bro, Evie, who invites him to shop for some protein after the school, but he rejects politely, claiming that he needs to go to Rebecca, as she has invited him to the gardening club. He goes over to the club, where she makes him some really good tea, before taking him outside to the terrace garden, where she shows him a bunch of very interesting plants that have some magical powers inside of them, including carnivorous plants that interest him. She looks at him and thanks him for being her friend as according to her, even though everyone at the club is really nice, she has trouble communicating with them, plus she never gets to teach them things like this as they are not really interested. He tells her that he is genuinely interested and would love to soak all this information from her, which leaves her soaking wet. The next day, he goes over to the sword practice in the main ground, where Amelia is fighting her opponent seems to be a random girl from the class who is having a lot of trouble fighting against Amelia, who keeps pushing her back before delivering a final blow, forcing the sword to go flying out of her hand and winning the bout. She immediately turns towards the instructor while the people around her cheer, and asks him to put her against Ray White. The instructor seems to be hesitant as Amelia is one of the strongest students and Ray is not particularly good at magic. But Amelia straight up asks Ray whether he has a problem and he replies that he doesn't have any problems as he enters the fighting ground. The battle starts and Amelia rushes in for an attack, which Ray blocks easily as she turns around and starts unleashing a flurry of attacks which are all blocked by Ray. He realizes that even though her attack still carries much power, she is definitely very fast and nimble. They back off and decide to go in for a clash again as Amelia praises his swordsmanship before going in for an attack once again. She keeps going on the offensive while Ray simply blocks and redirects her attacks when suddenly, this bout starts reminding him of his training with his father, who used to teach him inside of the forest, and all of a sudden, he redirects her attack before going in for his own massive one, but stops at the last moment realizing that it will hurt Amelia, and drops his sword. Everyone, including Amelia, is super shocked as the teacher crowns her the winner of the bout. He gets up and shakes Amelia's hand, while she asks him why he stopped before attacking her. Later that afternoon, they go together to have lunch while Evie pokes him for some more information as he tells them about his life before this academy and how he used to train in the jungles. Suddenly, Albert, the little shit, walks up to his table and slams his fists down, while challenging Ray to have a duel with him. His cronies support him from behind, telling Ray not to be a chicken and to fight their leader if he thinks he is so good. Ray calmly wipes his face and accepts the duel. Later, they all move near a clearing by the forest, where both Ray and Albert get ready for their duel. Claris notes that they seem to be inside of a magic barrier, which is preventing anyone to go outside and even their voices can't be heard from the outside. Ray asks for the rules and Albert throws him a sword before telling him that there are no rules as he pulls out a real sword from the sheath, shocking everyone including his own cronies who were thinking this was going to be a mock duel like they were having earlier. 
Before Ray can even pick up the sword, Albert ends up attacking him, but he dodges the blow before picking up the sword. Albert seems to be extremely mad at Ray and tells him that he's going to kill him and jumps in for another attack, only for Ray to back away, dodging the hit. Ray gets extremely angry and tells him to stop running before using his magic to create fireballs, which he throws at him as Ray dodges them one by one. He throws another fireball straight at Ray, which he cannot dodge in time, so he simply slashes through it, surprising all of them. Albert loses his mind and starts creating a fire wall, which Ray dodges and starts running towards him, while he shoots fire blasts after fire blasts at him. He throws one final blast at him, which Ray again cuts through, shocking Albert as he starts claiming that Ray must be the bastard of some noble, as there is no way a peasant can do this. Ray points his sword at him and tells him to admit defeat, but Albert has other plans as he uses one of his biggest attacks at Ray, creating a flaming dragon that rushes towards him, but Ray simply chops it into two, nullifying the magic completely. Albert falls down to his knees and starts crying like a little b while Amelia tells him that he needs to teach her how to do it as well. But before he can even move, a sudden gravity magic envelops the area, forcing everyone, except Ray, to the ground. Suddenly, a voice calls out from the forest as a hooded figure emerges from it, telling them that they are going to be sacrificed for the greater good. The figure comes closer and finally reveals itself by pulling down the hood, shocking everyone as it is none other than Professor Gray herself. Ray realizes that she has been behind all of the weird things happening, such as the monsters inside of the forest, which she must have been controlling to abduct students, as he deduces that she uses their brain to further her study about sorcery. She is impressed by Ray's deduction skills, but tells him that they are of no use in front of her, as she knows Ray is only good at close quarters, so all she needs to do is keep him at bay. She uses her magic to create a flaming serpent and shoots it towards Ray, who dodges one of them before rolling out of the way of the other. The fire serpents start chasing him, but he keeps running away before Gray gets tired of this and sends the attack back at his friends who are lying helplessly on the ground. Ray immediately decides that he needs to go all out and uses his secret magic powers and creates ice all around him, making a wall in front of his friends, saving them all before his hair turns blue and he calls forth a bunch of ice blades around him. She is horrified at this, as according to the legend, the Ice Blade Sorcerer was lost in the last war, but Ray replies that even though the Ice Blade Sorcerer was lost, he passed on his title, which now is safe with Ray. Gray goes out of control and shoots a huge fireball at him, but Ray simply uses a single Ice Blade to shatter through the ball. Gray immediately uses her most powerful magic, creating a huge dragon out of a purple energy and blasts it towards Ray, but he is able to simply nullify the magic by saying a few enchantments. Gray is utterly shocked as she can't believe what's happening and tries to shoot a final blast at him, which gets blocked by the sword before she starts running away. Ray takes aim and shoots his ice blades at her, piercing her through one of her legs, knocking her down as she crawls back while groveling for her life. She starts telling him that she can make him even stronger and tells him all the secrets of magic that she has learned after countless years before pulling a sneaky move and tries to burn him alive but fails spectacularly as Ray looks at her with pity in his eyes. He brings forth a sword and was about to kill her, when she suddenly pulls out a key from her necklace and stabs it in her brain, releasing the fluid inside, which starts transforming her into a monster-like creature who looks surprisingly like Ryuk. The circular magical barrier wears off, and the people inside it slowly get up as the gravity magic stops working. Amelia looks at Ray as he jumps up in the air and clashes with Grey and throws her back down to the ground with the help of her sword. Gray gets mad and uses her fire blast at Ray, which he easily blocks before creating a bunch of ice swords, which totally blindsides Gray as she didn't know he can produce so many weapons at once. She tries to stop his attacks and blasts a huge fireball at him which he is able to stop in its tracks and destroys it completely without even touching it. He spouts some bullshit at his professor, which is not really important to be honest and was pretty dumb so I am going to skip it, but at the end the professor decides to put her all in a last ditch effort to defeat Ray. She quickly creates a bunch of dark energy hands that she shoots towards Ray, but he shoots ice blades at her, which destroys the magic hands. She tries the same attack once again, but Ray is able to nullify it again, while Amelia and the rest realize that Ray is slowly getting covered in ice and freezing to death. Ray jumps at him and tries to claw him to death, but Ray blocks the attack with his sword, knocking her back. Even Ray realizes that Ray is not in total control of his powers and jumps towards Ray with a massive attack, while he bleeds from his nose. Ray tries to block her attack, but she is able to successfully shatter his blade while Amelia looks in horror. However, Ray has one last trick that he hasn't shown her yet, and he uses it to create a blizzard around Grey, which shocks her and takes her by surprise, enveloping her completely. 
By the end of the blizzard, she is completely frozen to death with some roses growing on her icicle body for aesthetic purposes as Ray is an Instagram influencer. Immediately afterwards, Ray collapses on his knees out of exhaustion and returns back to his normal form while seemingly happy that he was able to save all of his friends and that no one got hurt. He wakes up in a hospital dorm and finds Lydia's face looking down upon him as she expresses her happiness and relief to find out that Ray is okay. Abby walks up to him and tells him not to worry about anything as all of his friends are safe and sound and thanks to him, they don't even have a scratch on their body. She tells him that he did a really good job and even Lydia pats his head, telling him that she is proud of him and invites him over to his house whenever he is free. Abby tells Ray that his friends are waiting outside to meet him and leaves the room, which is immediately flooded by all of his friends, who surround his bed completely. He apologizes to his friends for keeping his life a secret from them, and explains that he is one of the seven grand sorcerers, known as the Ice Blade Sorcerers. He informs them that he was part of the Great War that happened a couple years ago, but ended up losing control and blasted everything away, and it was only because of Lydia that he was able to regain control over himself. This is the reason why he always keeps his magic abilities locked and that's why he is so bad at magic. He tells them that he has taken several lives in the past and that his hands are bloodstained, so he will understand if they don't want to be his friends anymore, but all of them reassure him that they trust him with their lives and know that he's a really kind person who wouldn't do anything bad. That night, when everyone was gone, Albert infiltrates Ray's room but finds him already up in his bed. Ray greets him with a smiling face and asks him why is he here. Albert looks down at his feet, as if ashamed, and tells him that he came here to apologize to him. Ray, however, is a nice person, unlike me, and tells Albert that apologizing to someone takes a lot of strength, and that he forgives her for anything that he has done before spouting some idealistic nonsense about how everyone is born the same way and bloodlines don't really matter. Well, say that to the royal family of England, why don't you? The next day, Ray goes back to his class again and finds out that the person who is going to replace Professor Gray is none other than her past comrade Carol, who is basically a TikTok influencer and a man of thought. Ray is absolutely worried to have her as the class teacher, as he knows how much of a thought she can be at times, so after Carol tells them about the tournament coming up really soon, Ray ends up going to Abby's office and pleads with her to remove Carol from her position, as the kids nowadays are ruined enough, and they don't need an e-girl to teach them. Abby, however, tells him that she was the only one free and willing to teach, and that's why they hired her. Ray tells her that even he will teach if she is willing to kick her out when Carol suddenly appears behind Ray and harasses him right in front of Abby without any care of the world. Ray quickly runs away from the room and the next day he stands on the ramparts alongside Clarice, where they note down the worthy opponents and players in this match, while Ray shows his uncanny abilities to predict the fights creeping Clarice out. Finally, Amelia walks up to the ring and within a matter of six seconds, defeats her opponent easily and leaves the ring without saying anything. Everyone is cheering for her, but she doesn't really look happy, and Ray thinks that this is because victory is too obvious for her, as everyone around her is pretty trash, so there is no one to give her a tough competition, which can help her grow. Ray ends up going to Rebecca, and asks her about what she knows about the opponents, and she tells him about a girl named Ariane who is Amelia's rival, and even though they used to be the best of friends, from the past couple of years, a friendship has been suffering terribly. The next day, Ray and the rest of his friends wait on the ramparts again, watching Amelia's fight as she defeats her final opponent with exceeding ease as well, getting a place in the upcoming competition, but again, she doesn't look happy even in the least. That night, Ray decides that he is going to help her and takes out a book that Lydia gave to him, so that he can keep following his training routine even without her being around. The next evening, Ray confronts Amelia while she is walking back to her dorm and asks her whether she is satisfied with her victories against the people that she has fought against. She tells him that she doesn't feel ready at all, and is pretty sure that Ariane is going to easily defeat her, just like she did the last time, which ended up ruining their lifelong friendship. Ray shows her the book that Lydia gave him and tells her that there is still nearly a month before the tournament, and if she wants, he can help her train and grow stronger. Amelia of course accepts, but she didn't know what kind of hell she was signing up for. The next morning, she goes out to meet Ray in the morning, who jumps in front of her wearing a weird mask and tells her that from now on, he is her master, and she will follow everything she says without any questions. She seems hesitant at first, but with a bit of shouting, she ends up agreeing to his demands, and the first thing he tells her to do is to take a 20 kilometers run around the school without using any magical abilities. She looks at him unbelievably, telling him that there is no way she can do that, but he tells her that she has to do it no matter what, and that she doesn't really have a choice. They start running together, and by the end of the run, she is down on her knees breathing hard, as she is not used to this kind of training, 
while Ray tells her that today was a short practice run and that from tomorrow on, their actual training will start. He starts training her in earnest from the next day, making her do weighted one-arm push-ups, weighted pull-ups, and also trains her in the art of slavery as he makes her roll a boulder up the hill, which obviously comes smashing down towards her. She gets so tired each day that she ends up sleeping during the class every single day, making her friends worried about her. The next morning, Ray again arrives at her dorm and starts beating a bunch of pans together, while screaming at her to wake up, but he is called down by Rebecca and her friend, who starts shouting at him for coming in unannounced to a girl's dorm, but he immediately apologizes, telling her that this is important for their training, when he suddenly spots Amelia running away from the dorm, and he goes off to chase her. He comes to the library, where he finds Claris and Elisa studying, and he asks them whether they have seen Amelia, but they reply to him that they haven't. He decides to use his special sonic sound wave ability, and like a bat, uses echolocation to find where Amelia is hiding. He enters the empty classroom and grabs her hand, pulling her out of the room and forces her to do extra laps for running away from her training. The next day, he goes up to the environmental club, where all of the buff guys are having a sauna, and he asks the club president to organize a cheerleading squad made up of buff guys for Amelia, and he ends up agreeing to it before handing him a bag of female clothes that Ray requested. The next day, he dresses up as a woman and walks out of his dorm and spots Amelia doing laps around the school, as she doesn't recognize him. He ends up entering the school where Ariane studies and creeps up the lawn hidden inside an empty box, where he spots a girl crying and he sneaks up to her like a total creep. It turns out that the little girl was Ariane's little sister, and she was crying because she was unable to find her older sister. Ray tells her to stop crying as he will help her find her sister, and she eagerly agrees. He takes the little girl around the school while the guys and the girls seem to be drawn to her beauty. Anyway, she keeps walking while pretending to be a noble schoolgirl when suddenly, the little girl notices her sister, and they both approach Ariane, who is sitting beneath a beautiful Victorian structure, drinking tea like a posh English lady. She is happy to find her sister, even though she wasn't even looking, and tells Ray to have a seat while leaving her sister out in the open to get lost once again. This woman seriously has the mental capacity of an oversized, soggy donut. Ray sits down with her, and she immediately cuts to the chase, telling Ray that she knows he is not from this academy, and that he should introduce himself as who he is. Ray ends up thinking that she figured out he was a guy and ends up apologizing in his original voice, shocking the ever-loving crap out of Marianne, who looks at him with a shocked face as he tells her that his name is Ray White, who studies in the Arnold Academy. She tells him that she knows his name as he is famous for being one of the very first peasants to get into such a distinguished university, and she has even heard about his exploits in battle. She still, however, can't get over the fact that he is a guy because he looks so perfect in a girl's outfit. She tells him that she always wanted to see how he is in battle, and invites him for a duel which he eagerly accepts. They exchange pleasantries while Ariane pleads with Ray to use a female's voice, as it is very distracting, which he obviously obliges. The battle starts, and Ariane immediately jumps in for an insanely quick attack, which Ray is barely able to dodge, before she turns around for another slash and their swords clash. Arian, however, is skilled in these duels and immediately drops down and comes up with a beautiful magic slash that even though Ray was able to defend, it ends up breaking his sword in half and Arian wins the duel. After the battle, Arian's little sister is taken away by some weird lady and Arian doesn't even ask any questions before turning towards Ray and asking him whether he is going to take part in the upcoming tournament. He replies that he can't do that and also tells her that he's helping a friend of his, who Arian knows very well. Ariane seems to be confused, so he tells her that he is helping Amelia train. Ariane's eyes immediately glow as she starts asking whether she is doing fine. Ray replies that she is doing well and has gotten several times stronger, so she should be careful in her next fight, as Amelia will be the one who wins it. Ariane simply smiles and tells him that she will look forward to it, and he leaves after that. By the time he reaches back to his academy, sun had already set, and while on his way, he ends up spotting a white-haired girl running towards him, while crying and she ends up tripping but Ray immediately catches her before asking whether she is fine. It turns out that she is Rebecca's sister, and she was crying because she cannot make the decision whether she wants to come to this place or not, as she has heard people are really mean. But this one act of kindness by Ray makes her believe that this academy is the right place to her, and she runs away after saying thanks to Ray. Ray goes back to the ramparts, where Amelia has just finished her training and is breathing hard. He calls out to her, and tells her that he is really happy that she is training so nicely, and at first the girls didn't even realize that the girl on top was Ray, but Ray tells them that it's him, and he was simply on a mission, shocking them. The next day, he ends up taking all of them to Lydia's place, where they each introduce themselves, and Ellis, who is a big fan of Lydia, shows her the collection of her experiments that she has kept in her personal journal. 
After the introductions were done, however, Lydia takes Amelia to a different room and reassures her that she's a really strong person, and that even Ray has been sending her constant letters, letting her know of Amelia's progress, and even Lydia thinks that she is ready to win the tournament. After that, Ray holds Amelia's final test inside of the jungles, which is an actual mock battle against him, which she ends up winning. The next day, the tournament starts, and the entire stadium is filled with people from several different academies who have come here to witness the spectacle. Amelia dresses up and goes in for her first match, or on the way, she ends up meeting Ariane, and they both have a little bit of a cold war before Amelia proceeds to the ring, and her first fight is against a green-haired boy from a different school, wielding a giant sword. The battle starts, and the green boy immediately dives in with some massive slashes, which are too clumsy to be honest. She is easily able to jump over his head, dodging all of his blows, and as soon as he turns around to try and attack her again, she uses her fire magic to create a small mine which explodes in the green boy's face, destroying his rose and ending the battle with Amelia's victory. Everyone screams in encouragement, while Ray smiles but ends up leaving the arena to go near a room where Albert is sitting alone. He seems to be a totally changed man as he thinks about his game plan when Ray tells him that he believes in him, and he also believes that Albert has what it takes to win the entire tournament. He smiles at Ray and thanks him for his words of encouragement, but sadly, when he goes over to the ring, he finds out that his opponent is none other than the beast Ariane. The battle starts, and they both end up engaging in an onslaught of blows attacking and counter-attacking each other, and surprisingly, Albert is keeping up with her. When her swords clash in the middle, however, she ends up using a magical blow, which knocks Albert down. Usually, he would have admitted defeat, but the newfound friendship and trust in Ray makes him move his body as he gets up once again and grabs his sword, before running in with a swift attack, totally catching Ariane off guard and disarming her. He tries to finish the battle by the last hit, but Ariane grabs the sword and shatters it in half before punching Albert in the gut, knocking him down once again and winning the battle. On his way to a meeting led by Abby, Ray surprisingly sees the leader of the environmental club following him behind. Later, he finds out that Carla is actually an intelligence agent and the buff guy's club leader, Lex, is her younger brother, who serves as the head of student security. They are apparently members of the Hale family, together with some dudes dressed in weird uniforms, and are responsible for handling intelligence-related affairs of the land. Abby then explains that the Grim Reapers have infiltrated the Magic Chevalier event with the primary aim of kidnapping or killing the daughters of the most noble families, and for this reason, they all had to be vigilant. Back in the arena, Rebecca wins her match and proceeds to the final round. While a contender named Lucas Forst, let's call this dude a Japanese version of The Flash, because he unbelievably wins his fight in a record time of two seconds, shocking the entire crowd. Meanwhile, Elisa and Clarice are troubled about Amelia and share their concerns with Ray, telling him that she has refused to leave her room or say a word to anyone. It turns out that her fierce contender won't be giving her an easy fight because Ariane is seriously training like she's preparing for heavyweight championship to the point that she destroys her punching bag. Later that night, Ray decides to do something about Amelia's situation, so he stays outside her door and gives her some long, boring speech about wanting to know the contents of her heart. When she lets him in, she expresses her fears about disappointing everyone who has high expectations of her, because even though she desperately wants to win the match against Ariane, she is caged by the fear of being defeated by her rival, and now sees no point in continuing to live a meaningless life. In a bid to lighten her spirit, Ray tells her that even though living can be pointless, humans are allowed to create their own reasons to live happy, meaningful lives and she can begin that by creating loving memories with her friends. Holding her hands, he tells her that he would like to be by her side every step of the way, and upon hearing this, Amelia falls into his arms and cries profusely. After crying like a toddler looking for her mummy, Amelia was ashamed of herself and pretended to fall asleep to avoid Ray's gaze. While watching her, Ray's memory flashes back to the time when he told her to destroy the rose on his chest. Ray's opening attack pushed Amelia backwards and gave him the chance to prepare for another attack as he jumped higher. However, Amelia found an opening and quickly activated a butterfly using her magic, setting fire onto the rose. After seeing her achieve such feat, Ray believes that nothing would be too difficult for Amelia to achieve, so he tells her that he believes in her. The G-Day finally arrives when a winner will emerge between the two fiercest rookies in the kingdom, Amelia and Ariane. Already, Elisa is worried that Amelia may not have had enough sleep, but Ray assures her that he already took control of the situation by spending the entire night in her room. Hearing this, Evie's twisted brain gets the wrong idea, but Elisa reminds him that Ray can be really clueless when it comes to expressing himself and talking to women. Meanwhile, Clarice is seen running in a dark hallway, as she rushes to make it in time for Amelia's match, but unknowingly, a mysterious figure appears from the ceiling behind her and descends to the floor. 
In the changing room, Amelia shyly requests for another hug from Ray to ease her tension, and he does so while assuring her that she has everything it takes to emerge as the winner. At the arena, Lex unexpectedly informs the announcer to hold on because something urgent came up, then he proceeds to tell Ray that Clarice has gone missing. Along with eight other students from noble families, Ray decides to trust his gut feelings and begin his search below the building. Later, Carol meets the other presenter who announces the commencement of the match between the top two contending rookies. The fight is opened by an aggressive attack from Ariane as she throws her sword upwards and magically activates an electric power flowing from her armor. With this overflowing power, Ariane jets her sword towards Amelia at a supernatural speed, taking her by surprise and landing her on the ground to the amazement of the audience. However, when Ariane charges forward again, Amelia patiently waits before creating a whirling ball of pink smoke which explodes and completely pushes Ariane backwards, taking her unawares. Meanwhile, Ray finds Clarice and other missing students in a hall lying fast asleep on the floor, so he picks her up and attempts to wake her. She opens her eyes to find Ray holding her but also sees a magical barrier appearing above them, so he explains that it is an interference spell cast by the Grim Reapers to shut them off from the outside world. Because she keeps bothering him with her needless tantrums, Ray tells Clarice to shut the heck up and let him focus, then he instantly lifts her on his shoulder and runs to focus the attention of Grim Reapers on him. Ray abruptly stops and creates four magical swords which he uses to fight against the Grim Reapers, but Clarice is allergic to being quiet so he warns her that she could cut off her own tongue with her excessive needless yelling. However, the room suddenly goes dark and hides the Grim Reapers from view, but Ray activates a spell so powerful that it destroys the magical barrier above them. Ray's spell even counters Ariane's attack by nullifying her magic, thereby dropping her to the ground. While everyone in the arena is confused about what just happened, Carol knows that this could only be Ray's special form of magic, the anti-material field. To finish them off, Ray creates a field of ice which covers the entire floor and traps the escaping Grim Reapers, while Lex tells him to let him take over from there, so he can return to watch the match between Amelia and Ariane. Until this very moment, Clarice still hasn't put a zip on her lips. Back to the two ladies, the fight hasn't been easy for any of them, and as the announcer calls for the final round, Ariane resorts to using her supreme move. With all of her might, Ariane charges herself with an overwhelming amount of lightning, with a force more than anything she had ever used on the arena. This is both shocking and concerning to the audience, as some of them become concerned for Amelia. Seeing this, Amelia is visibly surprised to find that Ariane had been fighting using her lowest power and wonders what's in store for her. Ariane eventually charges towards her, so Amelia creates an explosion to defend herself, but Ariane dodges it and mocks the weak effort, telling her to give up while she runs like the Flash and punches Amelia into the air. Still, Amelia steadies herself against the attack and lands on her feet, but Ariane charges up an overwhelming load of power that fires Amelia even higher into the air than before. Everyone watches with a horrified look on their faces as Amelia lands on the ground from that terrifying height. She tries to lift herself off the ground, but fails to and begins to accept defeat. Sadly, the faces of her friends come flashing before her eyes, but suddenly, Ray comes running in the entrance and shouts her name, telling her to get up. As she lifts her head, something red sparkles in her eyes, and with a command she calls Causalty, Amelia instantly activates a powerful beam of protection around her, with her pretty little butterflies floating around. The entire arena, including Ray and Clarice, is full of wonder as they witness the fullness of Amelia's power. As Ariane watches in shock, Amelia tells her to give up at this point because all her efforts to touch her would be in vain, as she has become literally untouchable, but Ariane, being a stubborn cow, keeps throwing pointless punches towards Amelia, but her efforts are in vain. According to Carol, this form of magic is an interference concept which originates from the butterfly effect of the chaos theory. She says the magic is so rare and special that it can't be used by just anyone and describes it to be a type of magic, which interrupts a sequence of events by overriding them. Ariane's futile attempts continue for a while, so Amelia sends a butterfly in her direction and in split seconds, she is hit by an explosion which throws her to the ground, while her father and younger sister exclaim in shock. Meanwhile, Clarice continues to cheer Amelia on, but in no time, Amelia begins to bleed from her nose and eventually coughs out blood. Carol explains that this is because her engram is too overworked by this form of magic, and Ray says she is really close to overheating. At this point, even Ariane is concerned for Amelia, who states her determination not to back down. Arian also refuses to back down and is determined not to lose, so she rushes at Amelia with a full force attack. However, Amelia escapes the attack and Arian ends up punching a dust of pink powder. Amelia creates an explosion which only breaks Arian's hand shield, leaving no scratch on her. Simultaneously, they both kick each other, 
but no one gets the other because they're in a gridlock. Even when they headbutt each other, they're equally affected by their blows. As they watch this, Ariane's father and sister continue to cheer her on while Evie and Elisa cheer Amelia on. Everyone but Amelia's grumpy father is full of cheers for the fighting girls. Amelia is able to land a blow on Ariane, but this doesn't earn her any significant point because at this juncture, both ladies have become rather exhausted. However, each with her last strength and determined not to lose, they both rush towards the other with a final powerful move until someone's rose is finally destroyed. A few minutes later, Ariane regains consciousness on Amelia's lap, surprised to see that she lost the match. She tells her how horrible her face looks like someone with a facial plastic surgery gone wrong. Ariane then compliments her for how strong she has become and tells her to stop crying because she had won after all. Amelia attributes her victory to friends like Ray and the others who believe in her, but states that Ariane has been the actual reason why she continually strived to be strong. Ariane also tells her that she was driven to be better every day because she wanted to be a good role model for Amelia, knowing that she doubted herself after their first fight. Tearfully, the ladies reconcile while apologizing to each other, hugging each other just as they did as children. Ariane accepts defeat and congratulates Amelia, who is immediately announced as the winner of the rookie's racket. The audience gets in an uproar as they celebrate both ladies for fighting valiantly till the end. In the hallway, the fathers of both girls meet and Amelia's father looks like the Grinch is always saying Amelia could have done better. But Ariane's father tells him to suck it up and be happy for once in his life as both fathers playfully warn each other that their daughters will become even stronger and win the other in another battle. Later, Ray visits Amelia who is all dressed up in bandages and stitches to check on her health and ensure her recovery. Amelia confirms that she is getting better and tells Ray that although the training was brutal and very vigorous, she liked some parts of it and was glad that it wasn't all a waste of time. However, when she remembers the nights that we spent in her room, she suddenly becomes flushed, displaying her embarrassment while Ralph watches with confusion in his eyes. Amelia asks him if he knew her magical power all along, but he tells her that he only knew that she was tremendously talented after his last fight with her during practice, but didn't know in detail what exact magical powers she possessed. Ray congratulates her and tells her that talent could be inherited, but her victory in the match was a result of her hard work, in combination with her talent. The next day, Amelia is happy to no longer be trapped in her birdcage of nobility, and ventures out with the others to cheer for Rebecca on the final day of the Magic Chevalier. Rebecca's opponent is announced to be Lucas Forst, the champion from the other match that won his match in two seconds and yes, our Japanese version of the Flash. The battle line is drawn and Rebecca pulls out a sword, but is surprised when within the blink of an eye, Lucas immediately places his foot on the ground and uses a special move called the Eighth Secret Technique which clouds the arena with darkness. Within that short time frame, he swiftly shatters Rebecca's rose. Everyone in the audience watches in shock and horror as he is declared the winner of the tournament. As he walks past Ray in the hallway, he recognizes him as the famous Ice Blade Sorcerer, but Ray takes him by surprise when he acknowledges that he also knows that Lucas is the new Peerless Blade Sorcerer. Ray wonders why Lucas competed in a match made for students, so Lucas tells him that it was all a show for Ray to know that he was around the corner. He challenges Ray to a fight that will happen in a year's time when he will prove that the Peerless Blade Sorcerer is the strongest sorcerer in the land, not Ray. Later, our beautiful lady Carol continues to annoy Lydia, but Abby tells him that this is not the time or place for that, and opens a door where all the Grin Reapers have been bound. Carol uses her spellbinding magic to hypnotize them into her Barbie playhouse, where she forces them to dance ridiculously, much to her own amusement. However, when she tells them to reveal the secrets of their dark organization, their heads explode one after the other, causing Carol to fall. The magic chevalier had come to an end, so Principal Abby delivered the closing speech with a vote of thanks to ask the participants who fought in the contest, but Rebecca spots her father walking into a room with a man. During a class meeting, Ray suggests that his classmates run a maid cafe in preparation for the upcoming cultural festival, but this is met by resistance from the spoiled brats who claim to be too noble to be dressed as filthy housemaids. Actually, this was all Amelia's lifelong dream, but she was certain that nobody would willingly offer to be dressed as a maid. So she pitched the idea to Ray and caused him to fall in love with it by asking him to imagine how they would all look in pretty short maid dresses. While she spoke, Ray could only imagine the beautiful Carla in her usual maid dress, so he also got fired up about the idea and decided to pitch it to the class. Now, despite the initial resistance of the class, Ray makes a motivational speech about how revolutionary it would be for maids to act like power belongs to them. He is seconded by Carol, who reveals herself in a cute maid's dress and seeing how heavenly she looks in the attire, everyone automatically falls in love with the idea. 
As he celebrates his mini victory with Amelia, Sarah abruptly announces to Ray that Rachel had just got engaged and Rebecca is seen walking in the arms of the man she saw her father talking with at the arena. In hindsight, Rebecca's father is seen signing an agreement with her fiancé, which is sealed by blood and a magical seal. Signing this, Rebecca's supposed fiancé then reassures her father that his daughter is in safe hands. Outside, some pink-haired weirdo is seen swallowing a magical admission from someone dressed as a mage. He is approached by someone in a mask who mocked him by saying that he deserves being called a glutton. However, the masked guy uses his magical giant hand to scavenge the brain of the dead mage. It turns out that the mage was one of the bad guys from the opposing faction, which was also under the eugenics group. To unite the various groups, the creepy masked guy says he can't wait to ascend all the way to the top, but in order to do that, he will need to acquire his vessel, which just happens to be Rebecca Bradley. The morning after, Ray comes to congratulate Rebecca on her engagement, but this is awkward especially for Rebecca, who doesn't seem to be too happy about it. However, she promises that she will still attend college until she graduates. On the other hand, Amelia is going nuts about their maiden dresses and begins to playfully harass Elisa to agree to wear one, but the poor girl is not on board with the idea because she feels the dress will reveal too much skin. When she calls Ray to rescue her from Amelia's creepy pestering behavior, it all proves useless, because he joins Amelia in convincing her to wear the maiden dress, telling her just how glorious she would look as a pixie maiden. On the other hand, the guys are all energetic as they decorate the hall for their culture festival, and this is only because they can't wait to see the girls in their cute maid dresses. To top it all, Ray brings them good news, saying that all the ladies, including Shia Lisa, have agreed to put on the dress. The erupt in celebration in Albert's tells Ralph that there isn't a single guy who wouldn't want to see ladies in pretty maiden dresses. Later, Ray goes to the student council to submit the class proposal for a maid cafe, but finds that the other members of the council are missing. Rebecca explains that this is their way of rebelling against her for stealing Cornia's fiancé. It turns out that Lord Evan, to whom Rebecca is currently engaged, was supposed to be engaged to one of the other student council members. Hearing this, Ray offers to help lessen the burden of the duties that have been neglected to them. After, Sarah runs to Ray and asks him to remain close to Rebecca, because she smells something fishy about her sudden engagement to Evan. She says that she can't get a word out of Rebecca, who won't reveal anything to her for fear of having her mixed up in any drama. Ray then assures her that he will do everything in his power to help Rebecca. To begin with, Ray visits Lydia and explains Rebecca's situation to her, but when he finds that Evan's household is known to be very powerful in sorcery, even among the top three noble families of the kingdom, he believes that there isn't much to be surprised about seeing that the Bradleys will willingly give their daughter out in marriage to someone from such a powerful family. However, Lydia insists that the engagement is still suspicious because Rebecca is not of age, so she tells Carla to look into the matter. On a lighter note, she asks Ray what his class would be doing for the festival and he tells her about the maid cafe. Casually, Ray says that the idea reminds him of Carla's gorgeousness in her outfit, making Lydia jealous to the point that she glares at the maid, who turns pink. When Lydia asks what he thinks of her in a maiden dress, he ruthlessly teases her, saying that it would be difficult to imagine a gorilla wearing such a beautiful dress. With a deathly stare, Lydia rapidly encloses him in ice spikes which forces him to bow and apologize for giving his honest opinion. Lydia tells him to anticipate seeing them at the festival, so he pretends to be excited, even though we know he was just scared for his life. While Rebecca is freshening up, she sees a vision of Ray as a little boy in a battlefield and begins to bleed out from her eye. As she stares at the mirror, she wonders why she has been having nightmares of him. Maria sees her bleeding and demands to know why she's up at that time of the night, but Rebecca says she got sweaty and needed to take a shower. Maria is also curious about the blood she saw on a white, but Rebecca covers up quickly, saying it was just a nosebleed. Before Rebecca leaves, Maria asks her if she's happy about her engagement, but Rebecca pretends to be cool with it and wishes Maria a love-filled marriage. However, the moment gets into her room, Rebecca weeps bitterly. Her memory goes back to a time when she Maria was always being bullied for looking differently. Although Maria was quite the stubborn goat, Rebecca would always watch her back and calm her down. However, when Maria found out about Rebecca's unexpected engagement and asked her if she was happy about it, Rebecca shoved her off and told her to go home because it was none of her business. It was while she ran with tears in her eyes that she bumped into Ray, who was dressed as Lily White. We are back to the present and Ray's classmates are all prepared for the festival. The ladies' girls look stunning in their pretty maiden dresses and turn pink like rose flowers when Ray compliments their dresses. Amelia calf Ray's attention to her dress and does a full 360 for him. She also drags Elisa, who almost totally freaks out, but gets her share of the compliment too. But this ends up annoying Amelia, the absolute control freak that believes she holds the keys to Ray's icy heart. Clara shows up dressed as a ghost because in addition to her being a total creep, 
Her weird classmates selected a haunted house theme. Later, Ray spots Rebecca and offers to walk her home, but on their way, Evan shows up and decides to complete the walk back home with her, which obviously dampens Rebecca's mood. Lex shows up soon after, and they attend a meeting where Carla exposes that Evan's household is a creepy haunted house with no evidence of humans living in it. However, he has been showing up for political meetings, meaning that he's absolutely trying to cover something up by deceiving the council members of the sorcerer's community. At this point, they realize that Evans is most likely a member of the eugenics and is after Rebecca's magical eyes. But while they have this meeting, the masked guy and Glutton are having their own meeting, and the masked guy says that Rebecca will soon be reawakened as Cruz, which will lead to the opening of the gates to a place he calls Akasha. When he takes off his mask, he shockingly reveals his face as the real Evans. Rebecca is seen crying on her bed when Evan reaches his finger for her eye. She slaps his hand away, but he laughs sinisterly and reminds her that it was part of the agreement on the contract that was signed by her father in exchange for keeping his position at the top of the other noble families. Even whispers into her ear and reminds her that something terrible could happen to her younger sister if she refuses to comply. Hearing this, she begins to bleed from her eyes and suddenly sees a vision of herself on a barren land, with young Ray mourning the loss of a guy named Howard. He tries using his healing magic to revive him, but Lydia tells him it's no use, but he refuses to accept his reality until she slaps some sense into him. At school the next day, Rebecca wonders if the young boy in her dream is Ray and questions the meaning of her dreams. Later, Maria calls Ray for a brief meeting and introduces herself to him, but the sugar tongue began to compliment her, making her blush hard. Maria asks Ray to help her older sister, even though Rebecca has outrightly refused to open up or be helped. Ray draws her in for a hug as he reassures her that he will do all he can to rescue Rebecca, but unknown to them, Rebecca had been watching them secretly. Seeing Ray hugging Maria in that way was quite troubling to Rebecca, that she was losing her sleep, tossing and turning on her bed. On the other hand, Ray picks up the romantic novel he got at the library and begins to read it, explaining the sad love story to Evie. The next day, Ray has a pretty normal day and enjoys the company of his numerous maiden girls, but at night, he has a dream where Rebecca meets him at a burial ground and asks him to tell her the truth of who he really is. Waking up from this dream, Ray finds that he's bleeding from one of his eyes and goes to wash it off. During his morning jog, he bumps into Rebecca, and they have a rather awkward meeting where they only discuss the cultural festival. Ariana and her younger sister also visit the maid's cafe to stay with Amelia, but when she doesn't see Ray, Ariana knows it's about to go down. The next second, Ray appears in his lily-white costume and becomes the envy of all the ladies in the cafe. However, this is his special plan, and he has something rolled up in his sleeves. Meanwhile, Clarice is having the time of her life as she terrorizes people in her ghost costume and Ray continues to be such a cute maid in the cafe, but he later assumes his manly form and spends the rest of the day with Rebecca. Maria walks back home with a picture of herself Ave Rebecca, when a lady in white hair just like hers stops her dead in her tracks to warn her that Rebecca will die. On the same note, Rebecca's father shows up at a meeting with the school officials, where he begs Ray to save his daughter, because she's going to die soon. The poor girl keeps seeing visions of the horrible monsters and bleeds profusely from her eyes, but this saddens Maria, who hears her sister weeping alone in the bathroom. While Ray goes for his early morning jog, Rebecca approaches him and tells him to watch after Maria because in a short while, she will move out of her father's house to live with her fiancé. As the cultural festivities continue, Rebecca bumps into Evan, who makes them both disappear, and at that instant, Ray runs out of the hall, making his friends wonder. But Evie brings them together for a brief meeting. On the rooftop, Evan tells Rebecca to get ready to be destroyed, then he creates a seal over them to isolate them from the external environment. As this happens, Ray begins to slaughter the monsters below, one after the other, but they're way too many and overwhelming. Surprisingly, his friends show up and Maria summons the butterfly effect to protect him, then they begin to kill the monsters as well. Evie gives some of the monsters a power kick into the air, then Albert uses his magic to set them on fire, while Elisa whirls up a tornado which destroys some other monsters with the help of Clarice's electrifying magic. By herself, Amelia causes some monsters to explode and is able to intercept one of the chief monsters who wanted to attack her from behind. However, both of the top monsters escape to the top of the mountain to participate in the main activity of the day. When his friends tell him to go after them, Ray throws off his wig and runs to the higher ground. On his S, he remembers Rebecca's father explaining that their family name, Bradley, was a curse cast upon their bloodline because of the massive bloodshed surrounding the crews. Also, Rebecca's younger sister was born as an albino due to the after-effects of Rebecca's birth, meaning that whatever happened to Rebecca, Maria would also be affected in some way. 
While Ray is yet to arrive at the mountaintop, the monsters have already landed, and the supposed Evan suddenly transforms into the white-haired girl named Lise. The real Evan traps Lise in a magical wrap, and threatens to kill her for pretending to be him all this while. With an evil look on his face, he screams like a maniac, saying he will reach Akasa using Rebecca. Suddenly, he casts a squirreling fire around Rebecca, but Lise quickly dispels the flames and appears in front of Rebecca, while she magically transports her to a farther location. At the same time, Lise pushes Evan into a portal that sends him into an unknown location. She asks Maria if she's prepared, then tells her that Ray is coming to finish business. Upon his arrival, he recognizes the glutton known for eating the engrams of sorcerers, and the idiot rushes towards Ray to attack him, but it's quickly blocked by a glass seal created by Lee's. Lee's introduces herself as the Sorcerer of Fabrication and tells him that Lydia and the others already know that she's in the picture. She explains that she'll make Rebecca overheat, while Ray will seal it with the Chrono's lock, because he's the only one that resonates with Rebecca. She tells him that it was agreed on the terms of her deal with Rebecca's father, that she can use any means necessary to protect the girl, but Ray doesn't believe that she is genuinely concerned about Rebecca. However, Lise explains that she has her own personal agenda and is interrupted by the glutton who breaks out of the seal. Ray faces the glutton by summoning an ice sword, but the monster is so strong that he shatters it into pieces. On the other hand, Lise enters the portal to handle Evan, who begins to threaten her like a hopeless fool. Lise tells him that he cannot reach her, but the buffoon seems to be deaf, so he activates the Dark Triad system by injecting something into his brain that amplifies his dark side, turning him onto a dark, giant monster. He reaches out for Lise, who seems unfazed, because there's a barrier in between both of them that she had been telling the moron about, but he didn't listen. To his greatest shock, Lee summons an apotheosis, which causes his engram to self-destruct, causing his monster form to be engulfed in flames. When he falls to the ground, Imin is so amazed by Lee's power that he calls her the strongest sorcerer. However, she politely declines the title, saying that the Ice Blade Sorcerer is the strongest of them all, and in her opinion, is strong enough to rule the world. Finally, Rays defeat all the monsters on their own end and heave a sigh of relief, thinking that it's all over. They all appreciate how far they had come, saying it was all because of Ray and that they were able to defeat those monsters. However, they are interrupted by the sudden appearance of a dark presence, which is followed by some dark mages who begin to use their magic to attack them. The teenagers are rescued by the timely intervention of the powerful sorcerers who taught them to stand down and enjoy the show. It turns out that the sorcerers had already destroyed a handful of the bad guys and had come to round up the last batch. The first wonder is Carla, who jumps with two sickle-shaped knives and slashes the mages in super swift moves she called lightning slashes. Next is Abby, whose swords elongate into chains of many arrows, with which she converts a burning flame into several arrows of fire. As usual, Carol turns the battleground into a Barbie playhouse and lures the monsters into a Powerpuff explosion. The final showcase is Lydia's rather violent attack, where she summons a lot of icicle blades and merges them into one big one with which she strikes the monsters into the ground. All this while, Ray is still struggling with the glutton, who decides to go all out and transform his body into its most ultimate size. With one fist, the monster punches Ray into the air and his body lands on the bare floor. Seeing this, Maria yells at Rebecca and blames her for the current situation, because she refused to talk when it was necessary. Just then, the glutton raises Ray by the neck, but Ray magically summons another sword, Aya the glutton assumes will be as easy to break as the others have been. At that moment, Ray throws the sword into the glutton's foot and causes it to be encased in ice, and to the monster's surprise, Ray stabs him with other swords and gradually, his entire body begins to be covered in ice. Before the ice gets to his head, the glutton finally admits to Ray's awesomeness, and immediately after, he is completely frozen in ice. Up to this moment, Ray had been holding on quite strongly despite the fact that he was bleeding through his eyes, so he activates the chrono's lock on the glutton, before falling unconscious. Rebecca attempts to help him, but Maria tells her to leave Ray alone because it was all her fault in the first place. This gets the sisters into a heated argument, and Rebecca says she hates Maria for all the trouble she has caused her. However, in the blink of an eye, these two sisters begin to admit that they love each other, but Rebecca suddenly begins to glow, and Maria does too when she touches her sister. Lise finally returns with Evan's body and causes Rebecca's body to overheat, all creating a mystical hedge around her, after which she tells Ray to activate the Chrono's lock on her. Rebecca feels ashamed for saying horrible things to her younger sister, but Reddy calms her down by saying that everyone is prone to such mistakes. Calmly, he plants a kiss on her lips and activate the Chrono's lock. Rebecca's father is informed that both his daughters are safe, all thanks to the Ice Blade Sorcerer, so he sends Lex to extend his gratitude to Ray. Later that evening, Amelia and Rebecca get into a friendly argument about who stands better chances at winning Ray's heart. 
Rebecca reminds her that she is now bound to Ray for life and asks Amelia if she can handle the attention Ray gets from a lot of the ladies because she's a more mature lady, unlike the wine crybaby Amelia. They end up rescuing an agreement for the best woman to win, but they are joined by Clarice and Elisa who are furious to see these two girls argue over Ray like they don't stand a chance. At the end, all four ladies wait to watch the fireworks with Ray. The next day, Ray visits Howard's grave confessing that he never believed he deserved a chance at his new school after all the lives he had wasted on the battlefield. Ray says that his ability to move on was all thanks to his master, Lydia, who had walked him through his grief to make him the strong man he is today. Finally, Ray says that he has now found people who love and accept him without judging his past, people he now calls his friends.